Hey everybody, today your auto previews a prototype of 11, the football manager board game. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to the pitch everybody. We are here to play some football and I'm going to show you how it works today in a solo run through. Because actually 11 can be played with up to four players and if you choose to go solo, the game comes with a solo storyline campaign that you can play through. And so today with my prototype, I am playing through scenario one, surviving the third division, our newbie football uh, club promoted to the professional football league for the first time in history. Oh, the people of the small town of New be or over the moon. But now, a few months later, no one believes the newcomers will survive the third division or even one season. But the people of the club know staying up is important for survival, so they've hired me to run this place, hopefully not into the ground. And uh, so... I've got some season goals, there's some slightly different setup, and some special rules. I'll come back to that in a minute, because let's actually just talk about the regular game. Um, when you are playing against other players or solo, you have got your stadium, you've got your business offices, and then you've actually got the field, the pitch, where you actually deploy your players at the end of a week and actually try to beat a rival team. And as part of setup, uh, we're going to play through eight rounds, or eight different teams, and we'll see what our standing is at the end of the season. And so I've got a bunch of cards here, and right now all I know about these teams is what I get from the scouting report. Eventually I'm going to flip this over and find out exactly how they have deployed their team to the field, and that'll happen at the end of the week when we play uh, against the middle and local club. And uh, they play 3-4-3, three, three, and what else? Uh, right. They don't have good defenders, but, oh, they are high scorers, and uh, watch the left wing. Okay, so that's a bit of information we have about what's on the other side of this card. Now, remember, that's going to be at the end of the week. When we get to the weekend, we are going to play, but right now, it's Monday, which means the board of directors is going to make an important decision about the overall direction of the club. And I should say, when you're playing the full game, uh, when you're playing the solo game, it tells you which directors to take. I've got Walker, Roberts, and uh, Kaminska. And I should say, folks, remember, this is a prototype, which is why you're seeing a lot of placeholder art, um, you know, you know these things. Although you are getting a pretty good idea of what the final art looks like on some of these cards. But anyway, so I've got these three boards of directors. Two of them give me a special feature. One of them gives me a special action I can do at certain points. And also, because these are my directors, they changed our default stats. By default, everybody has level 2 fan base, level 2 income, level 2 logistics, and level 2 team fitness. But Walker over here increased our logistics and dropped our fans. Nobody likes uh, Mia Walker. Uh, Roberts here increased our overall team fitness and dropped our logistics back down. But then Anna uh, Kaminska brought it back up. So th these are our starting uh, stats for our club. Also, everybody does start with one trainer. Um, you know, right off the bat, I've got Alex Mancher here. Everybody basically gets the exact same thing there. And what else? Oh, everybody gets an objective. You actually uh, draw two and pick one. And so my objective is to be enterprising. We aren't world class. We need to sell uh, before uh, before we lose our players. So uh, over the course of the game, I can either get two or four points towards my final score if I sell a strength three player once they've been trained before week five, which is you know just over halfway through the game. I got to get a level three player and sell them, and I can, if I do that, I get two points. If I sell a level four player, I can actually get. Four points. So this is something that I'm trying to do. I keep this secret so nobody else knows what it is. And um, and then the rest is all set up. There's a bunch of players that are ready to be recruited, including rookies or youngsters, they're called. There's a bunch of staff that can be hired. There's a bunch of sponsors waiting to give us money. And there are the infrastructure upgrades we can make to our stadium. Now that's the basic setup, but because I'm playing uh, Surviving the Third Season, we had to, we specifically didn't draft for. Uh, board of directors, we got a specific one. And, um, right, everything else is set up like we're only using uh, Division Three opponents, and we have no players. Normally, when you play, everybody has a rookie, uh, you know, a hot shot up and comer, plus a veteran. And the veterans are interesting because they start out super strong and they have some kind of cool special power. But what happens is over the course of the game, eventually they, um, 
lose their special powers because they go past their prime, and you might want to sell them at that point. But if we have no veteran players. We have no starting uh, fresh rookie youngster players as part of this setup. And otherwise, we are ready to go. So... It is Monday, and the first thing that happens every week is we have a board meeting, which means everybody draws one of these cards. Let me just go ahead and shuffle this up one last time so I don't know what's coming. And we have got a director problem. Okay, specifically, our best midfielder needs to visit his family abroad due to family circumstances, should we allow it. And now you might think, oh, this is something that me is the you know, the the new coach that or you know or the new owner. I'm not quite sure who I am in this because there are all kinds of staff, but you think this would be my choice? No. This is the choice of the uh of 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 the uh, board of directors. I roll the die. And let's see, I got a two. And now if you look, that means Mia voted blue, Caroline bo voted yellow, and Anna voted blue. Which means we are going for the blue answer, which is, he can't miss a game. Let him just go for two days. And what this means is, we are going to lose one of our operational uh, capacity this week. Oh, I forgot, folks. Actually, uh, the first thing that happens every Monday, before we deal with whatever the event is, we actually get our income. Since these are my levels, I start out with two money, one fan, that is not very good at all. We're going to need to get our fan base up. Three operation tokens. And in the real game, that my prototype, I've just got cubes. In the real game, I think these are all going to be specially shaped tokens, so they look like uh, this art and stuff like that. You can hit the Game Found link up there on the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes to get an idea of what the final game looks like. You'll be able to see more art, less placeholder stuff. Anyway, so three operations, or is it legit? And three fitness. Okay. So, this is what we've got to play with this round. And then, this director-level problem comes up, and the board of directors says, Hey, you know what? Okay, let's just let him go for two days, and we are going to lose one of our logistics. Honestly, I am totally fine with that choice, because logistics cubes, you can use these to get bonus-free actions, and you have to spend two of them to get a bonus action during the rest of the week. So, having three of them doesn't do me any good anyway. Now, I mean, it's, it's still nice to have three, because... Because at the end of the week, I get to keep, I to carry one cube over to the next week. So it would be nice to carry this over. So next week, I'd actually have four if our logistics don't change. But if I'm willing to go with the uh, desires of the board, I could just say goodbye to this now. Now instead, they might have chosen, we need him. He's an important part of the team. Now, I'm glad they didn't choose that, because then we would have lost two cubes, and I couldn't get a bonus action this round at all. But if they had gone the red way, they would have said, let the man visit his family. That's okay. And if they would have chosen that, we would have actually increased our logistics by one. But that would have been the red, which means I would have had to roll, I would have had to roll a six. Because, again, if you look at how these uh, people are deciding, well, you know, Anna... She, she tends to go towards the red. But Mia and Caroline, they will only... They're a bit more harsh. They'll only go for a red on six. So if I'd rolled a six, it would have been a unanimous vote to send them home, which would have actually increased our logistics, our, our, our operations. And um, so here's the thing. If I want... I can redraw this die. I could try to talk some sense into them. And the way I do it is by talking about the fans. The use of the red fan cubes uh, are that you can spend them to re-roll dice. So if I had a really big fan base, I could just keep on rolling until I got the six I need to increase our logistics. And then if I could do that, then we would have actually four of these operations, and that means I'd be able to do two bonus actions this week. But as it is, you know what? I'm just going to be happy they weren't total jerks and went all yellow, which would have hurt us even more. So um, we will we'll just live with what they said, and we will drop by one. Okay. Not the end of the world. Oh, but I forgot one more thing. Remember, uh, some of my board director has features. Mia's feature is, if we go with the blue option, we actually get one logistics. If we go with the yellow option, we make one uh, more money, which we ended up going blue, didn't we? Yeah, we had a vote of two blue. And this one doesn't have a feature, it's an action. This is one of the things that I could spend my logistics on to uh, discard all staff cards from the display and draw five new ones and then get a higher. So you can get a bonus higher and refresh everything. So that was important since we did go. I mean, we lost one uh, because we were only kind of nice to one of our best midfielders. But hey, we got one back thanks to Mia. 
So, all right, that was it. Everybody does this first step on Monday, the board of director meeting, simultaneously. You gather all the resources that you have got based on your current stats, and then you uh, see what problems the board of directors will solve. Then we move on to Tuesday. And now the game takes on a more traditional turn structure, where on Tuesday, each player in turn order is going to take a turn doing one action. Although if they want, they can do a bonus free action, but again, by playing these operations tokens, by paying two of them. And one, you know, so once I do an action, then player two would take an action, player three would take an action, it would come back to me, and we'd be on Wednesday. We'd do that on Wednesday, we do that on Thursday, and then uh, Friday we take a break, and when we get to the weekend, it's game time. So, um, I'm playing solo, so it's just me, and what action am I going to take? And there's a bunch of stuff you can do, but the main thing is, you're probably going to hire more players, or hire some staff, or get a... Uh, a sponsor, which is a way to get money and unlock special bonuses, or invest in infrastructure, which is you can buy any of these. But there's other stuff you can do too. Like, I'm not really happy about the fact... Oops, by the way, this should have been way down here, right? I, oh, I was just doing an example. I'm not happy about the fact that our fan rating is so incredibly low. If I want, of my three main actions that I get to do this week, I can spend one of them to try to raise the standing of the club, either in fan base, operations, or fitness. And what that means is I roll the die. And I can re-roll it by calling upon the strength of the fans, if I don't like what I roll. Um, to move this from a 1 to a 2, I, I can't fail. Or actually, I can fail, as long as I don't roll a 1. If I roll higher than the current level, I say, I'm going to try and get the fan base up, we're going to do something. And as long as I roll a 2 or better, we get more fans for the rest of the game. If I wanted to try to improve our fitness, then I would have to roll a 4, 5, or 6. And again, I do have one fan, so I could re-roll once. So that's something I could do, and I'm kind of inclined to do it, although I won't really get the benefit of this until next uh, week when we get all of our income again, and then, hey, we're getting two fans instead. But you know what else can I do? Well, remember, I am enterprising, right? And my goal is, by week five, I want to sell off a level three or a level four player. Now, all the players we have right now, they're all weakling level ones. They are so inconsequential, they don't even have names. So maybe the first thing I want to do is recruit a superstar player. Uh, and the interesting thing is, well, here's the interesting thing about recruiting players or hiring staff or getting sponsors. You'll notice uh, there's five on offer, but I've divided them into groups of two and three. That's because only the three on the right you have access to. These are in the queue for the future. So I can't recruit these uh, players, but I could recruit any one of these. And then once I do that, this one will slide over and the new one will come over. And the interesting thing is, well, I've got a choice between recruiting um, Barbeau, and this is just the universal generic image, he would have a unique picture, kind of like Gonzalez over here. Gonzalez is a level four right out of the gate, a very strong player. And he would only cost me one money. And remember, I only have two money, two, uh, two uh, money cubes. So I cannot afford uh, Barbeau at this point. He cost me three, which is too bad. I'd like to get him. He's a strong midfielder with a strength of three, and he's a penalty kicker, but he is out of my league. But I could get Gonzalez, and why is he so cheap? If he's a super powerful level four, why is he so cheap? Well, because before the match begins, I have to roll the die. And if I get a six, then Gonzalez goes wild, and we end up um, one point behind the, the opponents. Right off, I mean, he scores. Um, our, you know, he scores on our own goal. This guy is out of control. He's such a wild, powerful player. So there's a one in six chance if he's on the team that we will be down by one at the beginning of every match that he plays in. But on the flip side, he's a level four right off the bat. I give him a little bit of training, and then I could sell him before the fifth week and get four points. Now, when you're playing competitively, you're just trying to have the most points at the end of the game. You're trying to run the best you can. Um, you get points by doing well in actual matches, but you, do, you get points all over the place in all kinds of ways just by having a successful football club. So I know I want to do this, and nobody else knows I want to do this, but there's more. Because I'm playing solo, when you play multiplayer, you just have your one secret objective. In solo, I've got other goals as well. Now, first of all, I cannot move on to scenario two in the solo mode unless I make at least 24 points. Unless I'm at least an inexperienced manager. Oh, I guess I'm a team manager. All right, so um, I've got, I mean, and this is one way I could get four points towards that score. 
But there's a couple of other optional things too, because the board would appreciate it if I would train three youngsters. That will give me four points. So that's like a bonus objective I have for the solo mode. And if I play at least three games in a sold out stadium, which means I need four stands and fans in each of them, that'll give me four points. So there's eight points of the 24 I need right there. And there's four more. And again, if I were playing multiplayer, I would just be trying to do these to have the most points to win. So, right, so I definitely want to get a bunch of youngsters. Now, youngsters are interesting. When you recruit them, you draw them blind. You have no idea what they're capable of. They start out the same as any of my normal players. They have a strength of one. Only after I recruit them do I get to flip this over and see what they're capable of with a little bit of training. So I could, for my first action on Tuesday, I could get one of these, because now, I remember, I've got this thing. I want to get three youths. But, what else? This is interesting. Remember, I could be going for players. I could be going for staff. I do have one staff already, Alex, our trainer here. Or I could be going for uh, sponsors. And remember, I could do these three. Diaper Den. If I want to put a diaper ad on the jerseys, I don't know if our my players will be happy about that, but if I do that, I get a permanent boost in income and I can train three youngsters. That's a really big deal. I am definitely want to get that bonus, which means I got to get these youngsters on staff. So if I could very quickly get those youngsters uh, in here and then get this, they could all be trained and I will have completed this bonus objective of training three youngsters to get four more points. Plus, they'll become good players, too. Once you train these youngsters, these rookies, it's, you, there's no telling what they could do. So, is my first week going to be just, hey, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and recruit three youngsters, and then hopefully... Well, now, nah, here's the problem, folks. Uh, well, first of all, if I were playing against other players... This is a card drafting game. This diaper den might not stick around. People might see I'm trying to get a lot of youngsters and they might snag it out from underneath. But the other thing is, at the end of the week, the rightmost card in each of these columns is gone, is removed from the game. So I will lose my opportunity for diaper den if I don't get this sponsor on board by the end of this week. But I, don't, I can't do it. I only have three actions. Four if I include a bonus action. But right now, the only free action I can do with these is activating Anna's special uh, um, action. These actions can be done as your core action, or you can uh, do free actions. And this one is trash all the staff, draw five new ones, and buy any of the and you know, hire any of them you want. Um, or I could do this one, which is train a player, and um, that means I get to flip them and unlock their full potential. And as a bonus, when I train them, I get to put a fitness from the supply on them so they're ready to play without having to burn through my uh, supply of fitness tokens. Uh, oh man, that is a bummer. So my turn could be, on my, on Tuesday and Wednesday, I could get two of... Uh, two youngsters, and then on Thursday, I could get this, and I would instantly get to train two of them. And that's something, but then I'm not using this to full effect. Although, if I put, if I make this the official jersey of our team, this will also uh, give me um, a one extra buck, and it will increase our income from the rest of the game by two. Now, that's a really common thing, that you get short-term money and long-term money whenever you get sponsors, but it's these bonuses you really care about. What else is going on? Well, if I look over here at the staff, I could hire Kim Johnson, the scout, uh, Ronia DeBrick, the steward, or John Littlehand, the doctor. And you know, so this is great if I have injuries. I don't have any injuries yet. We haven't actually played. Injuries are possible. We might get injuries, and I might have to deal with those next week. But he's still going to stick around next week. Although, remember, in a multiplayer game, somebody might snag him. I mean, all of these are up for grabs. But since I'm playing solo, I know I've got a little bit more time to grab them. This scout is really kind of nice, too. Uh, as an action, once I... Well, I spent an action to get Kim. But then I could, as an action, use Kim's ability to hire any player, including the ones that I can't reach. And when I use Kim to hire... Or if I use Kim to hire a youngster, I get one more fan. So that's pretty cool. So my three days could be hire Kim... And then as a bonus, or as a free action, use my logistics to get Kim to hire a youngster, which would, uh, you know, and this is every time I hire, wow, that's pretty cool. And maybe I just hire my three youngsters, but then I will be out of time and I won't be able to get that sponsor. 
I think this is a plan, though. I think this is what I'm going to do. So for my first action of the game... Sorry, folks. I know this was a lot, but there's a lot going on in this game. For my first action of the game, I am going to hire another staff member. Okay. So this costs one. One dollar. And we're almost broke now. And, um, and that was it. So these slide over. One comes over. A new one comes out. It is Susan Johnson, a resource manager, which I could certainly use because that would be a permanent increase to our logistics, but we don't worry about that. Now, before my turn is over, remember, I can do free actions. I'm going to do a free action with Kim and spend two of our operations to activate, hire any player from the display. I could hire any of these now. But if I hire a youngster, I'll get another fan. So that's what I'm going to do. DaCosta. You're on the team. Remember, hiring youngsters is always free because you don't know what you're going to get. So I've got Tacosta. Tacosta is a forward, which means they're going to play, um, you know, in our forward, not in our midfield or our defending area. And um, I haven't trained Tacosta yet, but I can now go on ahead and look and see that once Tacosta is trained, they will go from a level one to a level three. Um, and they, well, that's just really great off the bat. We'll have a, a strength three, but they cannot be played on defense. They can only be played on offense. Plus, once they've been trained, they can start earning experience by being put in games and getting them the opportunity to score goals, which is another way to score points. Get the rookies, get them trained, and then get them into games to score points. Even if you don't win the game, you know, you know, developing, uh, this team could be a way to score points. So anyway, that was my first turn, folks. Um, and now, if you were playing, you would take a turn. You might grab somebody or a sponsor or this. You might invest in stuff. You um, Actually, you might sell your existing trained players, etc., etc. But um, we are now moving on to Wednesday. It is my second turn. Um, let's see. Oh, now my problem is Kim Johnson has been used. You can only use the action of a card once per turn. So, but if I, you know, this is still, this feature is still uh, in play that if I get youngsters, oh, I forgot. If I get youngsters, I get more fans. Okay, so now I've got two fans, which gives me two opportunities to re-roll dice if things don't go my way. Um, also, it means I could put two fans in the stands. And um, so I could use them for rerolls or I could use them to make more money because I am broke. So that might be a good use as well. But we're on to Wednesday. And now what am I going to do? Well, you know what? Um, oh, if I just had one more green, I would spend both of them for a free action to have Alex train this kid so he can become a level three and DaCosta could be ready to go. But that is not going to happen. So, uh, because I've only got one more green. So what am I going to do? You know what? I this this diaper guard. This is too good to pass. I'm just going to go on ahead and for my second action. Um, you know, the most of the time, what you're going to do is you're going to grab a card and then pay. Although, remember, youngsters don't cost anything. This is a midfielder. This is Evans. Once Evans gets trained, um, he's hot tempered. Oh, he's a level four. Once I train him, which is what I need. I need to sell a level four. So I need to get this kid trained and and trade it away before round five, so I can get those bonus points for my enterprising nature. And um, although in Interestingly, whenever, you know, once Evans is on the team and trained and, and the audience loves him, if I sell him, I will lose one of my fan base. And that's painful. Um, but we'll worry about that later. So anyway, he's a midfielder. So my main action this round was to do another action. And if I want, if I could do a free action, if I had more, I would go on ahead and trigger this as a free action and get them trained. But anyway, that was it. So my second action was I just... First, I got staff and then I have free bonus action. Then I uh, just recruiting, and now we're on to Thursday. This is my last chance. And you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring on the diaper garden. So, uh, here's a little bit about who they are and um, you know what's going on with them. Now, when you bring on a sponsor, you have a choice. You can um, make them, you can put their logo on your jerseys. You only get to do this once, and that's what you're gonna, your players are going to wear for the rest of the game. And that means you get this money and you get the bonus. Now, instead... I could, instead of putting this on my players, I could make this an ad on our ad boards and slides under here. And now when you do that, and so everybody knows we're advertising diapers at our stadium, you get a choice. You get the, either the money bonus or the special power bonus. You can't do both. And as you can see, I can have up to two boards. Ultimately, I can upgrade my stadium so that I can have up to three boards and with all kinds of powers. 
Now, your third option is you can just do an on-the-spot. You can have, I don't know, one of your players do a testimonial or something like that. That's what this bullhorn is. And that just means you get a, a quick influx of cash, and that's it. And then the card is gone. I'm doing this. Diapers. Um, we, you know, at, our, you know, at Newbie Town, uh, you know, the Newbie Football Club, we are all about Diaper Den. And so I get both of these. So um, now this is an important element. You will notice there are, whenever you see any of the resource icons, that means you get another cube. Or uh, again, there will be cool little meeple shapes in the full game. Whenever you see the icon with a circle around it, that means you actually change your income for that. So I have increased our income by two. And in addition to that, I've gotten one more money right now. And then I am do using this, I get to train up to three youngsters. So these youngsters have both been trained now. And boom, just like that, I am turning this club around. We've got two superstars that we went out and scouted, thanks to Kim Johnson. And if I just... Well, no, actually, no, at this point, it doesn't really matter. I don't need to train them because they've already been trained. Okay. So, that was a pretty productive first week, and this game takes place over eight weeks. It is now the weekend. It is time to play some football. Okay, so here is the process for how this goes. First of all, you have to decide which of your star players are going to be thrown onto the pitch. And for each one who's going out, you have to spend a fitness. So, remember, our, we are earning three fitness every round. So I'm going to spend a fitness to get Evans and DaCosta. They are both playing. So that means DaCosta has jersey number nine. So I'll move these around. Uh... I'm going to go ahead, because I'm going to rearrange the entire field. So jersey number nine, this is DaCosta. DaCosta cannot be played as defense. He will only attack. So, and he must be as a forward. So I've got to put him in one of these three zones. There's nine zones total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll go on ahead and put him over here on the right wing. Is it the wings? I'm not really quite sure. I think it's something like that. All right, so Evans. Evans could be offense or defense. And, I mean, I got to decide, I mean, he's a power player. A four, if I put him on offense, I am guaranteed scoring a goal. No matter where I put him, no matter what the enemy team throws up against him, Evans will punch through. But on the flip side, Evans will stop anything that this team has got coming. Now, here's what we know about the team. Remember, we have this scouting report. We could be thinking about the whole week. They're going to be in a 3-4-3 formation. So they're going to have three players here, four players here, and three players here. So I know that's how their 10 are going to be laid out. And then it also says they don't have very good defense. So that means, in theory, I should go on ahead and have my guy... I mean, maybe I'll be able to punch through with uh, some of my low-level ones. But, all right. We are, but watch the left wing. Now, I believe, if I recall correctly, that means their left wing. So that means their power hitters, because it did say, right? We have to make you watch the, the, the left wing, which I think, again, is their right wing. I might have this backwards. I forget if uh, I, this is something my wife and I had a hard time with trying to, or I read this and I'm like, wait, it's from the other team's perspective. So I'm pretty sure this means if whatever power hitters they have, they are going to be on this side. So if I'm going to put Evans on defense, I want to put him. Well, I probably want to put him in the forward. Chances are uh, they'll have their three strongest. So if I put him up here, he might block a goal. Right. Oh, but no, but I can't. Remember, he'll only play midfield. So what the heck? Let's go on ahead and put him on defense. But he's a guaranteed score. But I'm pretty confident I'm going to get a good score off of this. Um, yeah, okay, let's go with that. All right, so now. I've still got eight other players because there are 11 players who are going to be on this field. This game does not simulate the goalie. It's kind of weird. It would be kind of nice if they'd actually put a little uh, picture of the goalie here and here to represent the 11 players. I'm putting my 10 out on the field, but there's always the goalie who is basically a virtual goalie. All right, so now the rest of these players, they, um, they're all strength one. They have no special powers or limitations. And I can put them wherever I want. There are some restrictions, though. I cannot have, with the current rules, more than three in my forward. And, um, and no more than five in the middle and five in the back. Also, I cannot have more than two jerseys in a zone. Now, as I understand it, this is something that's changing. This game is still going through development right now. There's actually, uh, and one of the changes is, I believe it's going to be that um, you can have three, up to three in the center zones and only one on the side zones. But with the rules I have right now, I'm just going with the, with the prototype rules I've got. I can put two in any zone. So remember, I need to watch that wing. So I've got one big defender here. Let's see. Now, these are all level ones. I'll put a defender over here. 
And with that, I'll put a defender over there. I'm watching their left wing. So now I've got three defenders. Of the 10 I'm going to put on the board, five must be defense and five must be offense. So do I just put another defender over here? So I've just got tons of defense and I've got one striker. So I put a defender up here. Let's see. But now, the, all right. So let's go on ahead. So I've, all right, I need some strikers. So I've got one, two, three, four plus this. So these four are going to be deployed on offense. And I've got one more defender to put someplace. My, I, um, I can't put anything more here or here. They said the left wing. Let's, let's go on ahead and put some defense up here. All righty. So now that means I can only have one more in my forward. Let's go on ahead and have an attacker. And um, yeah. And let's, let's attack and attack. And let's... Right, so I've got one, two, three, four. And let's put some more defense here. And, uh, right, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Some, right. So one, two, three, four, five. So I've got my five attackers deployed. And I've got one, two, three, four, five defenders. Okay, these are extra ones. You'll notice these jerseys don't have numbers. That's in case I get a player like Le, uh, Lewin, Lewandowski here, who is 68. He'd be represented by a jersey that doesn't have a number because he or, or Allard there with a 22. All right, so uh, these might be future players I've got. I have made my deploy. I can't have more than three in the forwards, so I can't have more than two in a zone. I'm really focusing on their uh, left wing. I don't know if that's going to work or not. I have no idea what's on the other side of this card, but we are ready to go. Now, I should say, everything you just saw me do, all players in a multiplayer game are doing simultaneously. Everybody's studying their scouting report. Everybody's deciding how much of their fitness they want to spend um, to get uh, players onto the pitch, and also, in some cases, to activate the player's special powers. Like Morales here, if I, I'd have to pay one fitness to get him into the game, but then I would have to pay two more to unlock his special power of decreasing by two any opponent middle fielder. And I would be able to do that after I have revealed the opponent's midfield. So as you get a bigger and bigger team, you need more and more fitness to be able to use all the cool special powers. Although this trainer here, who can train youngsters, hire and train them. Um, Bonus is when I first hire Jim Lee, I get to uh, hire a youngster for free. His means I can train youngsters specifically, but to do that, I have to use fitness. All right. As opposed to Alex here, who can train anybody, as an example. Anyway, though. Um, oh, whoops. Oh, by the way, I forgot. A new sponsor should have come out when I got the diaper den on board. It's Farmer John Cheese. Okay. You betcha, Super Fries. Or super Freeze. All right. So, I think I'm done. Everybody decides how they want to set up their offense and their defense, which of their star players they are actually going to spend to get into the game. I didn't have to. By putting them in the game, I do risk them getting injured at the end of the game. We'll see how that goes. So, we prepared, and now it's game on. I flip the scout report and find out here's the layout. Yep, and here we go. You had to watch the right wing because there is a very strong level 3 hitter and a level 2 hitter. And, uh, and then they put all their defense in the back, and then they put some more offense around here. Okay, so now everybody looks at it, and everybody reveals. Um, now, it's at this point... Oh, I should say, now that I revealed this, everybody starts with one tactic card. Everybody got one randomly. There are, there are tacticians you can hire that can give you more tactics card. But it, no matter how many tactics cards you have, you can play one of them after the reveal. And mine is that I can now gain a fitness and place it on any player card. Now, the problem is... I don't have any players that want it. If I had, um, you know, recruited Morales, I, I I wouldn't have enough to be able to do it. But this would give me the other one I need to activate his power and decrease an opponent's midfielder, which means I would decrease this midfielder. At which point they'd become a level one and they'd be easy to block. But I don't have him. I've got two newbies, neither of whom want this. So unfortunately, my tactic isn't helping me uh, because I really should have hired Morales now that I'm thinking about it. But instead, I went for the big diaper training newbie rookie thing. All right, so anyway. So I could use my tactic, but unfortunately, I don't have any players that take advantage of it now. So we're just going to ignore that. But if my tactic, say, had been, after the reward is revealed, flip any jersey marker to defense, I could turn somebody on offense into defense if I suddenly realized, oh crap, we're not to protected over here and I should uh, put this person on defense or something like that. Or my tactic could be, um, after the card's revealed, if I have three or more fans in the stands, I instantly score a goal. Now, oh, I forgot. That was another thing to prepare. 
I am putting both of these fans in the stands. Now, it's impossible, but if I built another stand and I had three fans in the stands and I had this tactic, I'd be starting 1-0, and that would be awesome. But unfortunately, I don't have any of those tactics. I've got a tactic that does not really work with the team I've got. I'd hoped one of these guys would have had, but say la vie. All right, so now we just, everybody can do this simultaneously again. We just resolve every um, zone, one after another, and we see who scores. So let's just go on ahead and look a little bit closer. Let's start up here. So I've got somebody on offense. They've got a power of one, and there's somebody on defense with a power of one. So this person blocked. If there's a blocker, my attacker has to be stronger. So these two didn't do anything. Coming over here, I didn't put anybody here. They have a defender. Nothing happened there. Here's where things get interesting. I've got two attackers, one of whom... Um, Jersey 9 is strength 3, and one of... Oh! And I put a defender! Why don't I have two attackers? What was I thinking? Anyway, so, um, I, I'm not blocking anybody. Oh, that's right, because I was thinking they'd be attacking all the way up and down. They didn't attack there, though. Drat. So this defender had nobody to block. This attacker um, is not blocked by anybody. So, goal! I have scored a point. Hooray! Okay, we keep on going. Let's check over here. I have a 1 versus a 3 defense. This blocker stopped me in my tracks. Over here, I've got... Oh, dear. So, I've got a... Um, oh, what do you call it? A, an attacker, but their blocker blocked me. They've got one. They have just scored a point. Oh, no. But then we come over here. Remember the right wing? Um, it had a, a 3... And I'm defending with a four. They thought they were going to get through. Evan stopped them in their tracks. And I wish I'd put an attacker here. Uh, all right. I, I, obviously, I, I assume there were just going to be a lot more attacks on this side. And I was defending like crazy. So anyway, I stopped them from scoring. It, the game is tied. 1-1. One, one. Let's continue on. Nobody's in either of these zones, so nothing happens. I score a goal. They scored two goals because I did not defend. Why didn't I defend right there? This is the place to defend, not up there. You defend down here. You defend your goal. What are you doing up there? That's ridiculous. So they scored two since I had no defense. The goalie doesn't count. I scored one. Ouch. That's not good. And then finally, over here, they've got a level two. I'm blocking with a level four, so they didn't score. And that's it, folks. I just lost the match two to one. Because I was an idiot. I paid too much attention to scouting to watch the right wing. If I had put one more defense over here, then I would have stopped one of them and we would have had a draw. And that would have been a smarter way to go. But as it is, I lost the match. Ouch. Ouchity. Ouch. Ouch. No win for me. No draw. Big fat loss. Okay. And as you can see, I mean, the game gave me imperfect information. The scouting was kind of right. They're, they're big hitters and I did stop their big hitters. But... I did not protect the goal. That is the number one thing. I at least could have had a draw if I'd done that. Silly me. And um, I'm sure any soccer or football fan out there shout, Why aren't you protecting your your, your your defenders? Why are your defenders way up here? That's ridiculous. Um, you now, because what well, just happens, this team didn't put any attackers up there. They could have. They just didn't. Okay, so anyway. So, win, lose, or draw, the game goes on. And because I lost, I stay at zero in the division rankings. Ouch. And what team are we playing against? We're playing against Middleham. Right, so where is the Middleham? Uh, I thought, was this over here? There we go. Middleham, is that one this one? E nope. It's These are very tiny. This is a very difficult part of the game. Oh, here we go. I don't know if these are going to change. Again, you can hit that eye. Go check out the game found page or follow the links in the show notes. There's Middleham. Because they won their match, they move forward. One, two, three. They are currently leading the division. If, I, if it had been a draw, we would have both moved forward one. If you don't win, if you lose, you stand still. Um, and uh, or if you win, you move forward three. If you draw, you move forward one. Okay. So, and as you can see, there's a bunch of other teams up there, and so they're going to have some stuff happen as well. But let's look at the consequences. Because I lost, I now have to roll the die of shame. All right, so if I get... And you always want to roll high with this. If I get a five, hey, somehow... Or a six, lemonade out lemons, we will increase our logistics, or we'll increase our fitness. Um, but if I get a three or a four, our fan base, it can't drop any farther. Um, and if I roll a one or a two, we'll actually get injuries. So... Roll high. Roll high. Roll high. That's a two. That's a one-week injury. Okay, now if I had any fan cubes left over, I could spend them to re-roll this because it'd be the fans shouting, Come on, you can do it! Get back up! But I don't. So, we have... A, but now, I still have one chance. And whenever an injury comes, you roll the D10. 
And, um, nope, I can't avoid it. Somebody, or, you know, right, right now, I don't care if any of these low-level players get injured. But if on the D10, I roll a 9 or a 6, my star player is injured. So as long as I don't roll a 9 or a 6, I'm fine. An 8. Okay, so this player got injured. Nobody cares. They don't even have a name. So I did not suffer any big consequences. I, I remember, if I rolled a, um, you know, a 3 or 4, well, interestingly, my fan level cannot drop anymore. They hate us so much. So what would have happened is, instead of dropping, we would have lost $1. Uh, if we could have, if we had the money. But it, that didn't happen. I didn't get a chance. And, of course, as you might imagine, if you win, you know, the uh, consequences of this roll can be quite nice. Increase your fan crease, increase your fan base, increase your um, operations. But uh, if you played really hard, a better shot of getting injuries. There's a 1 in 3 shot of um, rolling the D10 to see if somebody suffered injuries. So, anyway. So, um, at least nothing worse happened with that. And um, But our standing is in the toilet, and now we have to find out what happened with all of the other teams. Because everybody started out at level zero of the division, so you'll notice we've got little dice to roll for all the other teams. So, let's see, I'll roll the two blues. So, um, although, this is interesting, normally what you do is, this is very quick, you just roll the die for all the teams that are different. If we were playing a four-player game, three other players would have been playing some of these other teams. But as it is, we're just going to imagine, virtually represent what they've done. And there's a special rule here. We have fierce competition. Every time you roll a loss for an opponent die, roll it again. So I might be at the bottom very quickly. So the first blue, they uh, they rolled a loss. They get to roll again. And in fact, it was still a loss. You guys suck. You join me in the loser circle. The loser. Let's look at the other blue. And he, uh, wow, rolled a loss. Wow, blue. Okay, we all suck. I feel a little bit better. Losses all around. Now let's look at the greens. All righty, green. Oh, they got a win. This first one got a win. And the other one. Uh, oh my gosh, they got a win as well. So I guess it was green versus blue. Did not go well for the blues. All right, now let's look at the three red teams. All right, that's another win for a red team. And... Uh, a loss, they get to re-roll because it's fierce. And okay, so the second one got a draw. And uh, the third one got a draw. Okay, so at the end of the first of eight weeks, I am at the bottom of the division. That is not very good. And if at least if I had drawn, I'd be tied for last place. Or I'd even, I wouldn't even be in last place. Ugh, drat. Oh, by the way, um, it is possible if you're playing multiple players that multiple players might have... Because everybody has the deck of the same eight teams. They're just different versions of the cards. So you never... Even if you know this team, you always got to pay attention because, you know, which uh, which version of the team you're going to get. If multiple players had played Middleham, they would have actually... Their token would have been flipped to indicate that, you know, they will not be playing next round because they lost twice. Um, you know, and so they had a very busy week. So anyway, so that was it. Game night, oh, our fans are not happy. And now, at the end of the week, we get to keep one of each of the regular cubes. So I'm going to hold on to both of these. We can keep as much money as we want. But, hey, uh, those fans who were very disappointed with a heartbreaking game, they thought it was going to be big. They, these two and these, the, the, these two had really great games, but the management was at fault here. So, um, for everybody you put in the stands, you're basically converting them into more money. So I've got more money to spend going into week two. And now in week two, I make four more. So we're looking at eight bucks. This week, I could make some very big purchases. And I certainly don't need to worry about sponsors. We have enough money, definitely. Still no fans, so no re-rolling of dice. One, two, three operations. So that means this week, um, we could do two free actions. Oh, and by the way, untap everybody who did a special action. And, um, oh, uh, three fitness. So that means we could put four cool high-level players on the field this round. Okay. So, and no, but now it's time for another board meeting. Coach, the journey to an upcoming away game is probably the longest season. It's an important match. Maybe it's better to fly the team there instead of going by bus. All right. So we'll find out what the board thinks. And the board says six. So it's red, red, red. It's a three-way unanimous, which means I will not get... Um, the blue option or the yellow option. They all chose red. And red says, why not high-speed train? So, ah, we lose one fitness, but we didn't lose money. I would have liked to... We have enough money. Choose the blue option, you dum-dums. And if I had any fans, if our fan base wasn't in the toilet, if I'd saved a fan, I could re-roll now 
Because if we could have gotten blue, we would have gotten, you know, the extra logistics, and we just would have lost one buck, and we have more than enough money. Ah, this board of directors. But I can't call upon the power. I can't say to the directors, think of the fans. What will they say? And I can't re-roll. So um, we lose one of these. So we can only get three players on the field. Although there are ways to get more. Okay. And so that was that. And now it is Tuesday. And once again, it is time to decide what are we going to do. I've got three actions. Although really this week, I've got five actions. So... Um, I'll probably use one of them to get uh, to get somebody hired, and if it's a youngster, I, I will get some fans, which I clearly need. But this one also lets me hire anybody. I, do, I could go and get these ones over here. That's interesting. And then, as a bonus act, you know, as a free action, I could train and get some more fitness, which means I'd have one, two, three, four fitness. Oh, by the way, these were spent, of course, and the scores reset. Let's not think of that again. So. That's pretty cool. So I've got five actions. I'm going to activate both of these people. And remember, I've still got this goal of um, training three youngsters to get four bonus points. So for on Tuesday, I'm going to train one more youngster. They're going to go in the back. And I can see that once they're trained, hey, um, oh my gosh, they're a super power player, but they're injured. They have a two-week injury right out of the gate once I train them. Now, that's not going to happen. Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot one more thing, folks. Always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. Very, very important that you watch the Klingon subtitles turned on because sometimes I make goofs. I forgot to play a goof. Um, both of these rookies played. That means they both scored a victory point for their first game. They also score a point the first time they score. And if I recall correctly, this one scored. Um, yep. So, I've earned three victory points. Even if I sell these, which I am planning on selling them to be uh, enterprising, or selling one of them anyway, I will still get these victory points at the end of the game. Now, before I sell you, I want you to um, you know, score a goal. So, I'm not going to put you on defense again. By the way, looking into the future, our scout report for week two is the Blackston Kings. The coach managed to bring a very fit team. Uh, their forwards are young, and they shoot from the distance. All right. So... And as you can see, there are 4-4-2. Four, four, so that means, I'm assuming, most of their strikers, their best strikers, are going to be here in the middle. So I probably want to put more defense here. Now, that's what I thought last time. I said, hey, let's put more defense on the right. And then I left myself open, and I got a draw. This is a tough choice I'm going to have to make at the end of the week, when we get to the weekend, and I'm deciding how to deploy everybody. And if I get this guy trained, which I think I'm going to do right now, remember, feature, whenever I hire a youngster, get a fan. Yay, one fan. Um... And hey, let's go on ahead. And so that was my main action. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on a second. Right, so my main action was I just trained without actually using Kim. But since it was a youngster, I got the uh, the bonus. Now, for the bonus of my free action, I'm going to have Alex train this kid. Although, wait, let's see. Oh, but if I train him, he'll be out of the game. But fine. All right, so I'm going to train him anyway just to get it done. So Alex is done. And hey... Oh, there's no reason to train this kid because I know um, my bonus is I get to put fitness on him so he could play, but he can't play because he's going to be injured. So I am not training you using um, Alex's cool special training ability. So uh, my first turn was I just did a regular recruit and I haven't used either of these. It is now Wednesday. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Now, here's an interesting thing. If I, let's see, I think this is, uh, what is that? That's a bus? Uh, I don't remember what this represents. I think it's like represents I can bust them to a training location or something like that. Anyway, um, if I have this installed as an upgrade, as a free action, remember, this is a free action or this is a free action, or this could be a free action to turn money into fitness. So I could start upgrading my stands. I know I ultimately want to get all four stands and four fans here so that I can complete this, have at least three games I have to of the eight games, three of them. So I have to start working on this sooner than later if I'm going to try and pull that off. And I know I've got to sell a high level. Right. Anyway, am I, what else am I going to do? Ooh. Let's see. Who came up? So, young. I, uh, so this guy, if I recruit him, you know what? On my first turn, I've got so much money. I didn't just recruit a kid. What I did is, on my first turn, I spent two to hire Jin Lee. Because as a bonus, when you hire Jin Lee, you get a youngster for free. So I got this guy for free for hiring Jin. Now, Jin, I've got three spaces that I could do bonus actions. 
Um, right. Uh, although, again, this youngster is terrible. I don't want to train him because he's just going to injure himself in training right off the bat. So that was my first turn. I've got another staff. Now, I should say, by the way, here's another thing that's really nice about Jen. You may have noticed at the bottom of the staff cards, there's victory points. There are different sets you can collect because I've now got two employees that have this particular um, you know, bonus structure. That means at the end of the game, I've got two victory points because they're part of a set. I've also got Kim Johnson. Kim Johnson wants to be joined by none of these people because this is a different set. That's a different set. Um, Carol doesn't go into a set. If I hire uh, Carol, I just get plus one victory point at the end of the game. So this was nice too. I've gone from one to two victory points because these two, Alex and Jin, work well together. Okay. So anyway, so that's important for later because like I said, there's points all over the place in this game. It's not just about winning games. Although it is important. At the end of the eight rounds, or the eight weeks of this season, whoever is at the top of the league, uh, if it's our human player, scores, what is it? I think it's like 15 points. And then it, it, there's like a table. It gets worse. 13 points, 11 points, 9 points, 3 points, 0 points. So you got to get wins because this is a big source of points, but there's points all over the place. Um, you know, points for completing objectives, points for set collection, etc., etc. Anyway, though, I hired Jen. That means another one has come out. It is now Wednesday. And what am I going to do? So, and I've still got these to do some bonus actions. Um... Right. What am I going to do? Oh, oh, oh. Also, remember, to use Jin's ability, I do have to spend a fitness as well. So his ability isn't that great. The main reason I got him was because he works well with Alex, and therefore I got the set collection. Plus, I got a youngster for free. Well, I didn't get him for free. I got the points, and then I got the youngster, etc., etc. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? It'd be nice to get some real players, especially because my only tactic card um, needs players like Morales here. Who I've, or, wow, yeah, no, he's over here now. I, I think I'm gonna hire, I'm gonna get Morales. That's another midfielder I've got. Um, he costs one, so he's nice and cheap, but he's very expensive to use. So now I'm looking. I'm probably when we get to game time, I'm gonna spend these three to get those two into play, get him into play. Um, but that, and then I need two more. I'm gonna get one for my tactics. I would need one more from someplace else. Uh, now another way I could get one, uh, two more. That's interesting. I could do this. All right, so that's Wednesday. I just trained him. But then I am going to have Alex train this guy. So Alex's special power is done. And when Alex trained Morales and flipped him from normal to superstar, and he's got three, and he's still got his special power, Alex also, when he trains somebody, puts an extra on there. So now I've got two of the three I need. Or I say one is for him to play, and I need two more. So I could just pull DaCosta out, because DaCosta is not going to get me any more victory points for playing. Whereas I could still get a point for Evan scoring a goal. And then I could have Morales just decrease any midfielder by two. And remember, the scout report says their strongest strikers are striking from a distance, which I'm going to assume means they're striking from the midfield. So I want to get Morales out here and have a super defense. So for on Wednesday, I what did I do? Oh, I recruited Morales. And then as a free action, I used Alex. I've still got one more free action I can do to um, hire any player on the display. So I could get Allard over here. But here's the problem. Getting a bunch of players doesn't do any good if I don't have the fitness. You know what I'm going to do for the last one? I've got one fan. I am not happy about this. So we're going to do some outreach to the community. I'm going to just try to increase the standing of our club. I say we're going to get our fan up. As long as I don't roll a one, we're going to move that up. Ugh! Oh my gosh! I did not pull a Ted Lasso there. All right, I'm gonna use our only fan to re-roll this. Ah! What? 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 Ugh! Well, uh, Thursday was absolutely atrocious. I have no more fans. I can't do that. What were the chance? Somebody tell me what are the chances of that in the notes? Rolling two ones in a row like that? Oh my gosh, that was terrible. But hey, you know what? At least... <sighs> Remember, now I can only carry one of these over, so I'm going to use one. Wow. What am I going to do? Well, I can't. I could train this youngster, but no, I'm not going to do that. I could um, hire another player from the display who I won't be able to use. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use Anna's ability. Discard all of this staff. Buh bye buh bye buh bye Draw five new ones. One, two, three, four... Five. 
And now I could hire anybody, including um, Donna and Ken over there. So, and that was me using her power as a free. And, oh my gosh, that was, uh, that was atrocious. That was ridiculous. So, I've got a whole bunch to choose from. Rebecca. All uh, right. So, first of all, well, actually, first of all, remember, I would like somebody that fits this. So, Paul, is that means I've got three. I've got three victory points. So, what does Paul do? Paul is a youngster trainer. Train or hire, but I have to spend fitness. Yeah, Paul, you're not the best. Do I have another one that can match with Kim? No, none of these who came out match with Kim for set collection there. All right. What a, all right, but what else do these do? What do you do, um, Dana? And again, remember, these are all placeholder art. All right, increase your fan base by one as soon as you hire her. If you have another steward, all right, so the more stewards you have, um, get a, a one immediate fan. This means increase our income for fans. At the end of the round, this means get a fan immediately. She costs one. Oh, I forgot another thing, folks. At the end of last round, remember, always watch the cleaning on subtitles. One of the things you do at the end of the round is everything on the right went away. So Rebecca was already gone. And so was uh, Portal Cookies. Oh, Portal Cookies. The publisher is Portal. They're having a little bit of fun there. Apparently, they like cookies at Portal's game offices. And uh, this one, whoever they were, they went away too, I think. I totally forgot. At the end of the round... Oh, and all right, I'm flipping these. I'm not supposed to flip them. So that's just in their normal state. Okay. So, uh, a youngster trainer, a steward. There's two stewards. If I get both of these over time, I think that makes sense. Or, what is this? Now, this was an interesting one. A mental trainer. Bonus. As soon as I do this, put one temporary strength on a youngster. So I could, for this game and this game only, turn this three into a four or this four into a five. It's temporary. Sometimes you can make permanent strength increases. In fact, that's the other one. Place a permanent. Um, so she is a trainer, you know, gets these kids in shape, can permanently make them stronger or temporarily make them stronger. Although again, you have to use fitness to use her ability. That's pretty cool. But no, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a steward. So boom, bonus. Having hired a steward, our fans increased by one. And if I'd had more stewards, I would have actually gotten some fans on hand. All right, so that's it. So we are at the end of the second week. I've got four staff, as you can see, although only two of them are, um, you know, working well together. Unfortunately, I've got a lot of money, no fans. All right, and it's the end of the week, so it is time. It is game time again. So their forwards are young. Shoot from the middle. So, all right, I'm definitely. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, he's going to score. Unless they put, I mean, all right, so let's go on ahead and, uh, all right, so you're jersey number nine. Let's put you over here on the side. And, right, and then what do we need? Jersey number seven right there. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I can put him in because this, I forget, my tactic is going to give me the other one I need to make Morales go. So both of these are going to play. Cool, cool, cool. Right. All right, so I'm sure Paul already mentioned that in the notes. I, I'd forgotten about that. So where is number seven? Seven decreases an opponent's midfielder by two. Any of them. And I guess that's whether it's he's on offense or defense. Now, this is an interesting thing. Like I said, a lot of stuff is changing about the design. One of them is that when you recruit players, not only will they be limited to a certain section of the field, but they will be limited to be on offense or defense. The DaCosta here, who is a special case right now, he'll only play on defense. Or, you know, he won't play on defense. He'll only play on offense. That's going to be a case where everybody... I mean, there's still stuff tweaking. Um, there's going to be an upkeep phase at the end of the week where you actually have to pay. You have to pay salaries for everybody. Currently, you don't have to do that. So they're going to bring the prices of things down and you have to pay ongoing upkeep, maintenance costs, and stuff like that. So again, go on ahead and hit that eye. Follow the links down in the show notes to go to GameFound to see some of the changes. This is a rough early prototype. Things are definitely changing. But anyway, so nine, he's going to be on offense. Morales has a strength of three. I need to score, score, score score. So where's you, where are you, Morales? There's your number seven jersey. And um, Evans, let's spread you guys out. You're both on offense. We need to score some goals. So hopefully that's three points I've made right there because they're all very, very strong. And he's going to... Right, so now, um, where else? Let's just go ahead and put another striker up front. So that's one, two, three, four. I can have one more. Uh, let's see, I can put one over here or I could put them together because the chances are they're going to block someplace. They are going to put blockers out. Let's go on ahead and try and come over there. So I'm just all forward offense, all defense in the back. Right, and so, and these are all, and Diaz, oh, Diaz. Well, Diaz is a one, but I mean, if I had trained him, he would have been injured, so he was kind of useless to me anyway. So I'm, I'm just ignoring him. He's out of the game. I'm, I'm not paying the fitness to get him into the game because there's nothing special about him anyway. So 
Defense, defense, defense. All righty. So am I going for 5-2-3? Maybe I am. Maybe I am. Well, no, I mean, I should put some defense up here, shouldn't I? Because they said they're best strikers. But, I mean, if, if they're young, that probably means they're stronger. And these level ones aren't going to stop anything. Because you have to match them up. I can't say, hey, let, let's put two uh, defenders on one attacker. Uh, um, er, yeah, I mean, I kind of have to put the defense up there. And, okay, let's go like this. A 1-2, two, a 2-5-3 two, formation. I don't know. You folks tell me. Is that a, the most ridiculous formation you ever saw? I'm not quite sure. I'm not very good at the football. We're just going to go with it. Okay. So I've um, I've used my tactics to, to put another thing out there. I'm not supposed to do this after it's revealed. Let's go on and reveal and see what we got. All right. Um, yeah. So there's some strikers. A, one way in the back and two in the front. Okay. I think this game is going to go better for me. Let's resolve, shall we? All right, I've got a level three. They've got a level one. We both score a goal. Ouch, because I didn't put any defenders up there. Up here, they put two defenders. I didn't go there. I zigged when they thought I was going to zag, so nothing happens. They put one defender over here, so it stops my little guy. My big guy goes through and scores a second goal. Way to go, DaCosta. DaCosta has already scored a goal, so I can't get more in, or, um, off of him. Oh, wait. oh, yeah, DaCosta was over there. Uh, either way, yeah, so... Uh, let's move on to the middle. So they have one defense. I had one defense. Um, I had one offense. So nothing happens here. They weren't striking. So I put this uh, blocker here for nothing. So um, this little guy. Oh, see. Wow, they don't have any big strikers at all. So Morales' decrease in opponent by two is immaterial. So uh, Morales' power eliminated one. This blocker eliminated the... But they, they were both blocked. That's fine. Uh, Morales was a three. They blocked with a two. So I scored another point. Three, one. And now down here, nothing on either of these. They, I blocked both of these. The final tally, three, one. We are the winner. Hooray! Suck it, Blackston Kings. Blackston Kings does not move up. And what I found is I just move all of these into the space they were because there's so many of them. I'm not sure how the real Ultima game is going to work. This is the most fiddly element of the game, trying to keep track of all these little tokens and keep them stacked up. So I just went up one, two, three. And who are you? The Blackston Kings. What do you? What is your icon like? Uh, there you are. The Blackston Kings stay. They lost, so they stay. And now we can figure out um, the other ones. So we uh, roll for them. I'm not going to do that again. You saw how that works. In the meantime, stuff goes away. New stuff comes out. Oh, there should have been more stuff. Oh, but oh, injuries. I won. Every round, win, lose, or draw, you got to roll to see what the outcome is. And um, I have no more fans. I didn't make any money because I didn't have any fans in the stand because my first week was so terrible. They should have shown up. They would have been very happy with this week. But anyway, so roll high. That's a two. Somebody got an injury. Maybe. So if any of these jersey numbers come up, they are injured. It's a six. Evans, no! And Evans, did you score? Why did I put Evans on? Yes, Evans did score. So he got his point. So he earned an experience point or a victory point, but he got a, was it a one week? Down here, it's a two week injury. He is out of the game next week. He can't play unless I have a medic or a doctor, but I think that doctor is long gone. So anyway, so he was out and there were no fans, so I couldn't re-roll. I didn't make any money. And um, so all this is spent. Evans is out, but you know what? It might be time to sell Evans. Because remember, before week five, I got to sell him. Here's the deal. If you sell, or if you trade away somebody who is injured or who has been put on suspension, which can also happen for one or two weeks, you only get half the money rounded down. You only, I mean, normally you get five bucks plus the experience points on them. So uh, I'd like... I mean, I, I mean, but I mean, next week he's going to heal. And then the week after that, when he plays the last game, afterwards I'll sell him and I will achieve my enterprising and get those four points. And I, probably by that point, I'll need some money anyway. Although we're doing pretty good on money. It's the fans that don't love us. And we move on to week three. We get some more income. The board has to deal with um, people wanting, um, you know, what, we need some social media or something like that or interviews. So we have to decide uh, what kind of public outreach we're going to do, which we clearly need to do. So they would roll to decide what's going to happen with that. And then I would have three more turns plus uh, one more bonus action, unless I can increase our operations. But I need to increase our fans so I can get this full. So I can, I mean, because I got to play three games to a full stadium. So I can do that. Um, I've trained two youngsters. I still need to train this guy and he'll come in with two bonuses, but then I will get those four, etc., etc. 
But hey, um, you know what's it going to be? I'm not quite sure. But I'm going to stop right there, folks, because that should give you a basic idea of 11. If you want to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.